love it, I promise you. Well, we have got some very special people with us, and I want to make sure I get this right. We have Chaim. Hi. Hi, um. Hi. <laughs> a good Jewish name. Hi, um, and Dr. Kim with us, and Goldman, mm -hmm. and um, I like that name too, Gold Man, Cola Gold Man. <laughs> Something we could use here at the station. They could use it in their ministry. But um, anyways, thank you for coming. You're here for a purpose, aren't you? Yes, we are. Yeah. Well, we, we all are here for a purpose. <laughs> well, right. and, a special purpose. And that's what, well, that's what we do. First. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, you were here. Tell us what you're going to be doing in the city right now. Well, we're here in Augusta. Uh, we just started our tour. Mm -hmm. um, we're a ministry called Repairing the Breach. We're a family ministry. So there's me and Kim, and we have six children who we homeschool, and now we're road schooling them, and we're heading out. Now, this is our first stop. We left Miami yesterday. What so happened? So we're a little, a little tired. A little, <laughs> so little wait, tired. Tell me little what happened out. on your trip from Miami. <laughs> well, you know, always an adventure yeah. when, when you're out doing, working for the I've kingdom. I've been there. I know. That's what I wanted you to tell. <laughs> We've heard your stories. But no, we, we, we went out last year. We, we had a tour last year. We, did, uh, we went out for about three and a half months, mm -hmm. uh, all the way from Miami, uh, Canada, Washington State, and back, about 7,500 miles with our uh, uh, SUV and a cargo trailer. And uh, we went back out with the same. Now the, the, the SUV is getting a little, uh, older. Getting a little older. older. What year is it? 97. Look, uh, <laughs> I'd say a little older. It's been very faithful. It has. Uh, but but it's, it's seeming like it's, it's you know, we, 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 we loaded it up for the first time and headed out yesterday, and we're finding out, you know, things on the road. But you know, being on the road, the provision <laughs> seems to be there. So we just, you know, keep on swimming, mm -hmm. like they say in, uh, keep going. In, you know, you know uh, <laughs> we just keep going. We just keep driving down the road and the, and the provision comes. But we made it to Augusta mm -hmm. because we're doing actually two events here. And what are the two events? Two, the first one, well, Kim is, is a bit what we call biblical health. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's this evening. Mm -hmm. And telling people how to eat right Dr. Well, that's Kim? just part of it. I mean, we're body, soul, and spirit, right? Uh -huh. So, of course, taking care of our temple, and what does that mean? We've got three teachings that I'll be doing this evening, actually. Um, one is what I call the foundational gems of biblical health. It's basically a framework. You know, everything that we do, how we live our lives is based on what we believe to be true, uh -huh. right? And so if I can help just kind of get in there and help build that foundation, because everything, you know, Yeshua told a parable, a really important one, about a foundation yes. and how important it is. And so if you want that abundant life of health, well, how do you get that? And it all comes from what's on your foundation. What do you believe about health? Where does it come from? What is the enemy of health? I'm going Sugar. to share. That's just one of them. Sugar. Absolutely it is one of them. But I'm going to share all of that. And so um, Pork. It, no. it's, <laughs> I'll, I'll fast track you four years of chiropractic school and a whole lot that I went through to get my degree. And honestly, I love chiropractic. Please go to yours. But that's just part of health. And I will help lay a foundation that you will be able to go out and know how to make great decisions for you and your with family. With no student loans. With no loans, right. If you yeah. come. The benefit of her four years. <laughs> with, with, with no loans, very right? Pra very practical Very practical. Yeah. And so that's the one teaching. And then the next I call the 12 simple steps to, to transform your family's health. And that is just full of practical. Bam, 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 bam. Do this. Everyone wants to know, what should I do? Well, here it is in a nutshell. And then, of course, wrapping it together, the third teaching for every believer is, well, why? I mean, we all want to feel good. We want to have a nice life. That's good for me. But what does God say about how we're supposed to live? And that is called the narrow road challenge. And I promise you will be challenged. But isn't that what we should be? Uh -huh. Right? We want right. a challenge. Right. We're not just going to sit on the couch. No. No. <laughs> You're right. So come so on out and join us for the challenge. Push your legs down. Press, press, press. We learned yeah. that yesterday. <laughs> but, so, our, so our purpose with repairing the breach uh, is we want to help other people walk in their callings. Uh -huh. you know, my, actual, my Hebrew name is Chaim Ezra. It actually means life helper. So I have, I have a name that made me, it just seemed I was, I was destined to, to mentor, to disciple, to coach. And that's what I do. And so I love seeing other believers discover who they are, of course, first in Messiah, yeah. but, and, and corporately as a body of Messiah, but who are we? Because 
my body is made up of a lot of different parts. And if, it's, and if those different parts are not doing very specifically moment by moment what they're supposed to be doing, or one part wants to become another part, right? We call that cancer when that's in yes. a physical body. If we would all just stay in our lane, right, know who we are, and perform the function that he designed us to do, we'd have a very healthy body of Messiah, and we'd be really functioning well to do. This is how we see, wrap things into health, those parables of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of the body, talking mm -hmm. about the body, really is how we have to have a vision okay. for us as the body of Messiah. So we repair the breach. And we like to get involved in, you know, people say what breach, and we say everyone. We'll, we'll get in the middle because we like to see unity. But what we found out is, is we really need to start with the person. Each individual person needs to become whole. Yes. And, it, and if we would accept who we are, if we would really take on that redemption, that salvation, really let it change us, and we're conformed into the image of Messiah, well, then how can we not get along if we're all conformed right. into mm -hmm. his image? Amen. So we look for unity with people that aren't, aren't connected themselves, aren't whole themselves. So we, do, we look for, as we teach, to bring a biblical health message, which is body, soul, and spirit. We talk about kingdom. Uh, we talk about purpose and identity in a big way. And I also do what I call kingdom business, which is even within the workplace, saying to people, what's your vocation? Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to go into full-time ministry, right? A lot of people are yeah. called to be entrepreneurs, right? The That's kingdom right. needs those people, right. yeah. needs finances. Right. Some people go, they become pastors because they think, well, I, I, in order to serve God, I have to be a pastor. No, if you're called to be a pastor, go do that. So I think that the, the main question that isn't being asked is, okay, I'm saved, now what? Yeah. Yeah. And that the, what we call the missing gospel, which is now that you're in the kingdom, what is your role in the kingdom? How, and how do you even figure it out? People aren't even asking the question. Right. What I've worked out as a coach, a mentor, a disciple, or whatever language we want to use there, is a methodology for helping people to discover their specific calling mm -hmm. uh, and then to start applying it and bring their life into alignment. So we're going to be talking about that mm -hmm. tomorrow. Kim, Kim has tonight. She's mm -hmm. Dr. Kim. She does the health. Tomorrow we're having a, a Messianic fellowship at the same, uh, same location at uh, New, New, Life, uh, New Life Natural Foods in Augusta. Uh -huh. uh, and we're going to be getting together right. for the whole day uh, for, for fellowship, mm -hmm. you know, food, discussion. We're going to be doing a few different teachings. We're going to be giving our testimony and talking a little bit about, you know, the lessons learned on the road and talking about who we are and how we found out who we are. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about kingdom. Uh, what is the gospel of the kingdom and how this is supposed to be manifested on the earth? That is something that isn't being taught uh, so much within the body of Messiah either. So uh, we, we want mostly people to come out to fellowship, uh, to, to really connect with each other, but to figure out uh, who am I in the body of Messiah and how can, I, uh, uh, how can I be a blessing. As Paul said, the gifts that are given to each believer are for the profit of the body. Uh -huh. So if you're not walking in your calling, you know what? You're ripping me off. Right. You're, 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 you know, I need you to walk in your calling. You need me. Just like, just like every part of the body. I'm you know, preaching spiritual other. gifts on, uh, on Wednesday nights. have been for probably about eight weeks. And, and he's exactly, that's exactly the scripture. You know, if, you're not, if everybody's not functioning properly, like the people that we was talking about a minute ago that weren't doing their calling, I, I say they'll go to, to heaven with a pew uh, attached to their rear end instead of serving <laughs> Jesus. They've been sitting for Jesus, sitting you know. For Jesus. So, and, and, and the no churches are filled, they're, they're filled with people just like that. It's not yeah. doing what God has called them to do. Every person is given a primary spiritual gift, and most have multiple gifts. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah. know, but if you're not using your gift, you're hurting the entire body. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, with this SI joint pain that I've had for 15 years. you got pain, it, it affects the entire body. It affects everything. So, yeah. It's, well, uh, Kim will talk to you about chiropractic. Yeah. I, got we want to get I got a wonderful get chiropractor. You. I tell you, he is <laughs> wonderful. He has helped me more than, I've been to Mayo Clinic. I've been everywhere you can imagine. And the chiropractor has given me more relief. Than, than all of them. That my medical daughter. Awesome. You know, Excellent. So. That's amazing. Well, um, on this, we're just going to stick this. We're going to go to Crossover Band, then we're going to come back and do your testimonies. But first of all, so what time tonight? What time tonight? 
Uh, five o'clock, five, <laughs> 5 p.m. in Augusta, we're, we're going to have three different sessions, as Kim said, but mm -hmm. people come to one, that's awesome, but all three fit together. Please. And then tomorrow morning, Saturday, we're there starting at 11 o'clock, and we're going to go all day, like, to 6 p.m. Wow. And the website for that is that people can get, because we have a web page for it, Repairing the Breach, just like it sounds, dot global. Mm -hmm. We're family ministry, but, you know, it's we global. proclaim we're global. So it's right. not dot com or dot net. <laughs> right. Repairing the Breach dot global. Okay. And you can go there, and it's there, but uh, about our whole tour and about uh -huh. where we're going. But forward slash Augusta is mm -hmm. specifically about tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, the location and what we're going to be talking it's about. The location so tonight is Washington, and tomorrow. Washington Road, isn't it? Yeah, Washington, 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 Road. Washington Road. Washington Road, Washington Road. Yeah. 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 And I, I, yeah, hey, I, we're, I, we're not from here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's up there where his and her hair parlor used to be, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, listen. Join us. The Chico's. All right. And it has the best food on Washington, on Washington Road at New Life. Oh, I can't wait. Like Come here. here. Come on up here. Grab me. <laughs> run, 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 run. Okay. Heather says no, but it's Heather's right store. Oh, okay. Just stand okay. here. Right yes, you can do it right here. Because right right you got right my here. mic here. No, right here. No, no, no. Right here. Right here. Right here. Okay, okay, I wasn't TV ready at all. So um, you can do it right here. Okay. We're staying open late tonight, the cafe. Okay. In honor of the event and so people can order food or juices or healthy food right beforehand. Uh, 2825 Washington Road, and the restaurant is inside of the health food store. And it's know. very good. I'm telling you, I don't know if you all went there before, but Russell and I like to skip away and go there sometimes, and it's really good. The salmon, yeah. And he likes the salmon. Okay, so yeah, 2825 in Fairway Square Shopping Center. Okay, at 5 o'clock. Tonight and tomorrow. Stay here? Okay. So if you don't get uh, off of work and have time to go home and eat, don't worry about it. Just yeah. go there and yeah. eat. Come on. Try to get there about 4.30. 4.30. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't get off of work till 6. Well, then come at 6. Then come at 6. 6.05. 6.05. <laughs> <six and five. laughs> yeah. All right. And it's free and open to the public, so people yeah. can come and go. If you can't mm -hmm. make the whole thing, that's great. That's fine. Still come. Come. Mm -hmm. And you'll get some really great teaching uh, from Dr. Kim, she's going to be teaching you some really good stuff. You're not going to miss it. Mm -hmm. How to healthy your children, <laughs> healthy your family. It's going to be good. And then tomorrow. From a bit, by the way, scriptural and biblical because yes. we teach everything, right? The foundation. It's right. not, you know, a lot of these things are taught within other movements, let's just say, other spiritual movements. But, but we, we have to find it in the Bible. Right. We have yeah. to back it up because right. he's given us the plan. So that's, exactly. that's where we go. People say we've heard a lot of things. When you really ground it in the scriptures, then, uh, then as Kim said, you also get your why. We don't just need to know what to do, but That's we right. need to wake up every day and do it. And uh, he tells us he why. He tells mm -hmm. us why. Amen. Well, we're going to be back in a little bit. We're going to Crossover Band. And uh, aren't you enjoying them today? Oh, wonderful. So it's Ronnie Davis and uh, his band. We'll be 
going home Well, I'm sitting here Just reading the newspaper And I see where we have troubles in the land And I read where there are earthquakes all about us And there are wars all around As it cracks the eastern skies Not just caught a glimpse of Jesus Coming down upon a cloud It won't be long We go Um, I want to ask our friends a question. You were raised in Philadelphia, a Reformed Jew. Yes. How in the world did you become a Jewish believer? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, my, how much time we got, right? Well, that's, that's a really <laughs> long story, but we'll, we'll keep it brief. Um, yeah, I'm from Philadelphia. Uh -huh. Kim's from Miami. Uh, we were both born to Jewish parents, so we're Jewish Back way. as far yeah. as Amen. we, you know, as we go, we're also, we were born in America, but we made Aliyah 
uh, years ago, and so were American and Israeli citizens. Now, I talked about Aliyah here before, but maybe somebody's watching doesn't know what uh, that means. Uh, Aliyah means to, to go up, mm -hmm. and so it's referred to when people would go up to Jerusalem, because it's on a mountain, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the feast days and things, to go up. So, so making Aliyah is, is that when a Jewish person returns to the land, uh, becomes a citizen after, you know, possibly thousands of years Amen. away, that's, that's called Aliyah. So we became citizens, so we hold dual citizenry in, in Israel, uh, America and Israel. It's uh, an end time sign, too. Well, we're coming back, right? We're yeah, coming back. We're uh, coming back. So, uh, but, uh, well, Kim, I think, would, would give, her, give her testimony. I'll let her go first on that. But I, what I wanted to say is when I, when I talk to people about this, I say, what is the biggest Jewish tradition? And people say, I don't know, it might be Yom Kippur or circumcision or kosher. I say, no, the biggest Jewish tradition, and I know this for sure, because from, from ultra-Orthodox to ultra-secular, all Jews keep this tradition. They don't believe in Jesus. That's it. That, that is, the, for the past 2,000 years, that's been the biggest wow. Jewish tradition. But we chose to go against that tradition mm -hmm. uh, in order to follow Messiah. Amen. And how'd that happen? And so, and so we challenge other people. I'm going to have Kim tell hers. <laughs> we tell other people, you know, when we come up against traditions, because sometimes we get caught up, Paul warned about traditions that lead away from the truth, mm -hmm. that we have to challenge traditions when it comes to following Messiah and be willing to give up anything Yeshua, that we might be holding Yeshua. on to, yeah. Yeshua. Right. So, Kim, right. your, give your yeah, testimony, sure. my dear. Well, uh, I'm like, as you heard, a little Jewish girl from Miami, Florida, and... Um, I wouldn't call myself secular. I was really involved in my synagogue, my reform synagogue. And I mean, I went from kindergarten all the way through confirmation, Sunday school. I went to Hebrew school. I had a bat mitzvah. I was president of my youth group. So I was quite very involved. And um, I loved being Jewish. Mm -hmm. But it was more of a culture, honestly. I, I believed God was, was God, but I didn't really know what that meant. And the right. words <clears throat> in, the, in the scriptures, I wasn't sure that they were really real or maybe they were just stories, you know, mm -hmm. to teach us morals and lessons. Um, what really happened, I will say, is uh, prayer is not ineffectual, as yes. we know from the scripture, because my mother actually came to faith before I did. Wow. And she was praying for me for many years. Wow. Um, so she gave me my own Bible when I went away to college, and I said, okay, well, I don't have to read that second part, right? You, you can't make me. She said, no, 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 don't worry. Of course, it was there, and I got curious, and I started looking at those red letters, and it was interesting. You know, mm. I've, I've heard about this Jesus guy. It was interesting, but, you know, come on. I'm Jewish. This, this is right. not, this is not this for me. This don't pertain to me. Yeah, it doesn't pertain to me. But after a few years, I think I came to the point I was close to graduating. I was about six months from graduating with a doctorate. I had everything going for me, and yet something was missing. You know, it's, it's the classic story you've heard and probably right. experienced. Right. Um, something was missing. I didn't have that full joy that um, I saw in some other people. In fact, I had a good friend who did have that joy, light, peace thing going on, and it did provoke me to jealousy, just like the scripture says that it will. Mm -hmm. And I said, please, what is your story? What, right. Why are you so full of joy? Yeah. Can you tell me? And he right. said, well, it's Jesus. I'm like, come on. You can't come teach on. me anything. <laughs> You're kidding. He said, no, no, no. I'll, I'll you know, show you. I said, okay. So we had a few Bible studies for several weeks, and finally he said, okay, that's, that's all you need to know. Really? Well, what do I do now? He said, well, when you're ready, you know, you make a decision. And it was one of those times where it's like when, if you want to jump in the pool and the pool's really cold, you know that the only way to do it is to jump in all at once. It was one of those times, I better do this right now or I'm going to lose my nerve. Wow. Because in the back of my heart, I believed I just didn't have, I was afraid to lose my courage, basically. So wow. I prayed my prayer of confession and repentance and you know from then it just kind of kept going i found myself in a church in in marietta georgia and i'm like well i don't really know if i fit in here i'm a little jewish girl <clears throat> this is great but who am i really and after a few more years of really learning my way around the bible and i did and i learned a lot of scripture and it went into my heart um after a while, I sort of felt like, well, what happened to being Jewish? Like, mm -hmm. am I not Jewish anymore? And 
it always comes back to identity, doesn't it? it does. Because I am Jewish, and there's nothing that can take that away from me. That's but right. you know who else was Jewish? Right. Yeshua. Yeshua. That's right. Yeshua was Jewish. And so right. I started rereading my Bible now, not seeing Yeshua as a, as a Christian, but as a Jewish Jew. man that he was. Right. And realized that there is no contradiction. It, it is, there's no right. first part, second part of the Bible. It is all one. Yep. That's right. And it's all his words from start to finish. And, and there's no, no problem. It fits That's together right. very, very nicely. Right. And so even through the time we spent living in Israel and now back here, I love how this, this path of finding the identity and, and seeking the calling just little one step at a time right yeah. this adventure that we're on now even with the children it's all it's it's According a it's a path yeah. right well the bible clearly says the steps of the righteous are ordered the lord mm -hmm. and one of the greatest things i ever had the privilege of doing and i've i'm a soul winner god's called me to share because of my testimony and he's given me a very bold you know uh, presentation to just witness to complete strangers and after I got saved, I said, God, I want to lead one person to Jesus that gets the ball and runs with it like you did in my life. And I want to lead one Jew to Jesus. Well, you know, prayed that for years. All of a sudden, one day, I'm face to face with an Orthodox Jew mm -hmm. and his wife. Don't have a clue. They're Jews. You know, I preach to everybody. They're sitting in the church. They have come from uh, Texas. They're in the military. He had tried to get saved out there. He went to the church to <laughs> get saved. And, and he said, I want to talk to the guy that's up there preaching. Oh, he's very busy. It'd be months before you get an appointment with him. And he's like, you've got to be kidding. Well, how about the associate pastor? I don't want to talk to the associate. I want to talk to the guy that I'm hearing preach week after week. Oh, sir, it'd be, it'd be months. So anyway, God sends him to Augusta, Georgia, to Fort Gordon. He's sitting out at the congregation. After about two or three services, he said, hey, I'd like to talk to you. I'm like, well, how about tomorrow night? What time do you get off work? He's sitting in my office and he said, if my grandfathers knew what I was about to do, they would turn over in their grave. He said, both of my grandfathers are dead. Both of them were Orthodox Jews. And as soon as he said that, the Spirit of God is like, here he is. Mm -hmm. I led him to saving faith in Christ. His name is Joshua Linovit. And his wife thought she was a, a, a believer, you know, all these years. Well, Josh gets saved. She realizes, hey, she don't have anything either. So about two weeks later, she's up, comes up there, and I got my kids with me, and we're fixing to take the dog to the vet, and she's crying like a baby. I'm like, Tracy, what's wrong? I've been a hypocrite all these years. I'm not saved either, you know. <laughs> so it was just glorious, and God Isn't used it? him in a mighty way. He's preached, and, wow. uh, you know, he's uh, just, I usually hear from him at Christmas time, wherever they are, still in the military, so they travel all over the world you know, serving God in, in, the, in our armed forces. But uh, that's about the only time I hear from them is during Christmas time. But it's, uh, it's an amazing yeah, thing when someone sees the Old Testament. I'm preaching through mm -hmm. Revelation in Sunday school. And I'm like, you can't understand Revelation right. unless you understand the Old, the Old Testament. Testament. Right. You've got to know Daniel. You've got to know everything mm -hmm. is, is tied together, mm -hmm. you know. But, it's a prophetic it's so prophetic. it's a prophetic. Right. It's the patterns that are laid out. That's right. Well, well, with me, uh, I I grew up uh, outside of Philadelphia and was Reformed Jewish and pretty secular. I did have a bar mitzvah too, and you know we did the holidays and, and things like that. But when I was in my mid late twenties, I started getting spiritual, and there was something calling. There was something bringing me uh, back. I uh, do video television mm -hmm. production, and at the time. I was uh, videotaping weddings, and I was going out and being sent, and I'd be in churches just as work, but I was hearing, I was hearing yeah. the word, yeah. and, and actually, years yeah. later, when I, when, I did, uh, when, I, when I did come to faith, I went back to do a job one time, and I walked in I, to the church, and I walked back out, and as I took a step out, I, I turned around and looked back, and I said, hey, wait a minute, you've been, <laughs> you've got, you've been bringing me yeah, in here. Yeah, right, all this year. time. But... Um, uh, when I was in my uh, mid-late 20s, w one day things were going really well in my life, and I woke up on a Sunday morning and I felt, I want to praise God. I don't know where that came from, I don't know, but it was a Sunday, so obviously you got to go to a church. And yeah. I walked in, ended up finding a church, and I was in Philadelphia, inner city black uh, church in, wow. in the center of Philadelphia. I walk in, I'm long-haired, only white guy in the place, <laughs> and, I, and I have no idea what the pastor taught that day, but I knew that when he gave the call to come up, I, 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 I had to go. Right. Um, but when I did, 
you know, I started the same thing, but, but I'm Jewish. You know, it's something about being the head and not the, like these verses come in, it's like, I don't even know where it comes from, but isn't there something about my expression, you know, uh, of this faith that might be, might be different, might be nuanced, because, you know, and so then I, I went and I found out I had heard about Messianic Judaism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I started studying that. And so mm -hmm. this life has been, now it's over 22, 23 years, you know, this, this figuring that out, you know, who am I? Who is Chaim Goldman in this? Because the one thing as a Jewish believer, when, when Christians say, well, that whole first part of the book, that's not about us, so I'll just dismiss it and we're just New Testament. Well, I can't do that. I can't say no. that's not my family, no. that's, that's not right. my people. No. And so as a Jewish believer, it caused me to delve into the scriptures in a way that I think a lot of Christians ignore. And if they would, they would see Absolutely. how it fits together because it's, this faith is something of practice. Yes. Uh, and it's really, a, it's really obedience. Mm -hmm. If I can define our faith in one way, it's obedient people. Mm -hmm. so, right. A father, I have six children. Yeah. Yeah. What do I want? I, would Obedience. you just listen? Just, yeah. Would you just Obey. do what I say? <laughs> I, I have the whole, I have everything to give you if you would just, if you would just do what I say. Okay. Yeah. And so the Bible shows us that obedience, mm -hmm. not in a legalistic way, but as a father that's to right. his children. And people say, well, that's the law. Actually, if people know the word Torah is actually instructions. Mm -hmm. right. It's what it means. It doesn't mean law. That's a bad translation. And right. so we can say, and I know that there's a lot out there, and I'm, I'm so one for unity, and I want to bring people together, but people say, you know, Yeshua, Jesus, did away with the law. But if you, if you change that to what the Torah really means and say that Jesus did away with the instructions of God, everybody would say, that's crazy. Of yeah, course that's he did. Right. So it's a matter, and it's, and, it's, and it's difficult, because, of course, people in every religion get into legalism. That's right. Every religion. It's not That's just right. Judaism. Every religion has a form of legalism. That's right. The question is, can we, be, can we have a freedom in Messiah while also saying, you know what, the Father expects things of me, and he's looking for me to be obedient. That's right. My faith and, and my salvation is a free gift, but how do I love my Father back? And I know, again, as a father, it's, you know, six Obedience. children, I know. What, how do I feel love for my children? when I give them my best and yes. say, would you just follow? Right. Because I, I have, you know, it says it's, in Luke, it says it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the whole kingdom. Yeah. He wants to give us the whole kingdom, right. but he has to, he can't trust That's disobedient right. bad stewards. That's yeah. right. He needs us to know what our calling is, to walk in our calling, to listen to his voice, and to be obedient to it, and then he gives us more, right? right. As the good yes. steward, he gives it, us more. And that's the secret. That's what I teach people all the time. God said, obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. All the wealth he had me give away, the houses, the savings accounts they could preach in South Africa, that's nothing. He wants you to obey. My life has been blessed since day one. He purposely got me broke to teach me to live by gave faith. Away all his he had money, me give away millions. all the wealth to teach me, Father, I, will, he, I said, God, one question. The day after I was saved, I had a place at Hilton Head at the beach down there. I'm like, how will I take care of me and my family? Jesus said, get rid of that junk you got and follow me. Mm -hmm. All my worldly possessions. Now, if he'd have said that on May the 6th, mm -hmm. I'd have been like, what do you mean junk? That's my stuff. That's my treasure. I've worked my whole life for this. I've, I've won this money fair and square. Didn't cheat. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, this is what I do. Right. You, know? Work I mean, you know, hey. But I understood what he was saying. And I said, okay, I got one question. How will I take care of me and my family? God Almighty said, I will take care of you and your family. I said, that's good enough for me, Jesus. I'll do it. And it took him seek years. Seek first the kingdom. That's right. Seek first the kingdom. If we mm -hmm. seek the kingdom, he says, the Gentiles worry about all that other stuff. That's right. You don't, you, don't, you don't do that. You just seek me. And it says, seek first the kingdom. And we actually, our tour that we're doing is called Kingdom First. That's right. what we're all about. First. That first, that seeking the kingdom first isn't, and then you do something else. When right. you seek the kingdom first, it's only, it's exclusively that's because right. when you do it and he provides everything, why would you go anywhere else? Right. And that's why, but it's not just a corporate calling, and this is where we, and we invite people to come out, is right. to help people peg their individual, unique calling. Right. Why were you put on this planet? Right. Why were you called out of right. darkness into light? Why for such a time as this, this. why right. are you here? And yeah. you better answer that because that's part of your obedience. Right. So mm -hmm. Bible says yeah. we're fearfully and wonderfully Wonderful. made. Mm -hmm. And the Jewish people, buddy, I've told people since I got saved, they're coming to faith. Don't you get down on the Jew. Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. You better leave them alone. We're, just, That's we're the a little stiff-necked, so we're, <laughs> four, we're forerunners. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, last <laughs> night on Facebook I saw someone said something very bad about Israel. Mm. And I said, well, you better read Genesis yeah. 12, 1 to 3. Yeah. And I left it with that. That's because right. Because that says we have to bless you Israel. Bless, you, bless you bless Abraham, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> you curse Abraham. God Almighty, so I'm going to curse you. You better get your hands off the Jewish people. Oh, you better love them. Love them, which we do here. Amen. Well, we're going to go to uh, Crossover Band with Ronnie Davis, and we'll be back in a little bit. the fire and send down the rain loosen the shackles and break all the chains I want to go higher than I've been Jerusalem host Earl Cox. 
Four months after Mark Sokolow survived 9-11, a PLO suicide bomber attacked his family in Jerusalem. Sokolow fought back with the 1992 Anti-Terrorism Act passed to safeguard American victims of terror worldwide. Despite his victorious class action suit in New York federal court in 2015 and $654 million in damages, a circuit court of appeals ruled last year that foreign terrorists have a constitutional right to avoid answering in a U.S. court for attacks abroad. The Obama administration refused to support the victims for fear of the verdict's financial impact on the PA, which spends millions to support terrorist families. The U.S. Constitution should protect our citizens, not their attackers. I'm Earl Cox in Jerusalem, reminding you to support this station because it supports Israel. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, crossover band, Ronnie. I'll tell you what, yeah. I love their music. Yes. You, you got to come back more often, guys. Right. They're very yes. good. Yes. Very <laughs> They're very good, yes, aren't they? Yes, they are. Very good. Well, um, so we were going through, you know, your testimonies, how you're now serving Yeshua. You're yeah. on the road. You do repairing the breach. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Kingdom first. Yes. Amen. Talk about it. Okay. Your tour. Well, Repairing the Breach is our ministry that's based on Isaiah 58, that we would be called Repairers of the Breach. Um, when I read this in Isaiah 58, uh, which is an amazing chapter, I, I, I suggest to anybody, it's absolutely a pattern for a, a consecrated life, for, mm -hmm. for a life of, of, you know, really Yeshua, the kind of life that Yeshua told us to, to live, that we would be called someone who, who repairs the breach, that many among you would do that. And that got on my heart 18 years ago, now it's been, that it's been within me that I wanted to do a ministry like that. When we got married mm -hmm. and Kim took on the vision, a couple of years ago we did it formally, that we would get together, we would go out and we would teach uh, in order to repair the breach in three basic areas. One, um, ancient paths, or what people call Hebrew roots or Messianic. There's a lot of different titles, but basically mm -hmm. uh, going back to the roots and to understand the Bible from that perspective and to the conduct feast. our lives. The, the, the feasts, you know, and also just the whole patterning the of whole the Bible, the, this Hebraic mindset as opposed to a, you know, a Greek mindset. It's, mm -hmm. it's very different. If people haven't experienced mm -hmm. this, there's other ways of reading. There's other paradigms that really open you up because all the writers of the Bible had, let's face it, a Middle Eastern Hebraic mindset, mm -hmm. not a Western Greek mindset. So they wrote in that culture, in that language. Mm -hmm. Secondly, biblical health, Kim being trained as a chiropractor and, and a whole ministry on body, soul, and spirit health, uh, and then helping people to walk in their calling. So when we go out, we have sort of a, a big toolkit yeah. as far as ministering to people. But this year when we went out, what we're, we're talking about is kingdom. We need to, to bring the kingdom. You know, the kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. Yeshua left us to do greater works. He left us here to manifest this kingdom. Right. And yet this thing, this gospel of the kingdom, if you say to people, what is the gospel of the kingdom? Or what are the keys to the kingdom? Or what are the secrets? These things that Yeshua talked about, people don't even have a one sentence answer. And yet in Matthew 24, it says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, be preached in all the earth as a witness to the nations, and then the end will come. Well, if this is what we're supposed to be doing, and we can't even talk about it for <laughs> a sentence, what it is. We, we, we have an issue. Paul, it says, went in and talked about the gospel of the kingdom for months in the same synagogue. Right. So it's very com complex. Mm -hmm. So we're going out to talk to people about the kingdom, and right. what is it, and how do, you man how do you manifest it in your life? So that's where we get kingdom first. And we come at it from different angles. When mm -hmm. Kim talks about health, mm -hmm. okay, we have to have our life healthy in all different ways. That's part of a kingdom lifestyle. So it all, it all comes at that. When, when we, so we're, we're teaching kingdom, we're teaching purpose, we're teaching identity. And when we have a, a two days in a city, we also do a biblical health you know, evening or conference. So that's what right. we're doing. So go. Oh, go just, and of course, when you understand or as you start to grasp the kingdom, um, a lot of it is the power that you are given and by what you can Spirit. do with that, right? So right. we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach. And what does that mean? Well, in the area of health, it means that um, we're told to choose life. That means that you actually can. Mm -hmm. But that means you need to make use, you need to actually make the choice and you need to be led by the Spirit as you choose wisely. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that, that just, you, you can. 
right? Mm -hmm. So in all areas of your so, life. So, so we set out, we designed this tour for six months. Again, Augusta, we start it tonight. Mm -hmm. Augusta is our first city. Um, and we're heading out mostly to the southwest. So people can go on our website, repairingthebreach.global. Uh, and look under the tour information and see, you know, are we coming near you in your town? Mm -hmm. Because we're going, and we're going to be doing over 20 events over the next six months. Where we have our six children, age 14 down Traveling to with you. almost yes. five. We have yeah. six children that we're homeschooling, ro road schooling now. <laughs> so we're having this adventure, yes. going out in faith and going around. And when we come into a city, um, the leadership, the people who want to host us, and we do, people host mm -hmm. us. We come in, mm -hmm. we stay with people, and, and they provide a venue. We realize that we come and we go. And in order for there to really be ministry and fruit, that's not enough. There needs to be the local body. You know, we can sow the seeds, right. but if we just go in and teach people, we just teach information, it doesn't go anywhere. That seed might you know, fall on a stony area. So we work right. with the local people who are hosting us and say beforehand, during and after, how can we help you actually have an impact for the kingdom? Follow because up. not only are we supposed, we're supposed to do two things, preach the gospel of the kingdom and disciple, disciple. make right. disciples. Right. And it seems like we haven't, to over 2,000 years, the body of Messiah has not done a great job so much doing either which causes us to question what is it that we have been doing for 2,000 years. But, be that as it may, this is our generation. Mm -hmm. We need to step up. We need to stand on the shoulders of obedient people because those in previous generations were being obedient to the level that the Spirit was showing them what to do. Well, we get to be in this latter generation where we get so much revealed to right. us. This is really amazing. Yes, the kind is. of things that our forefathers in the faith would toil over for right. years and maybe never see, see that it. we're completing that race yes. for them in this generation. That's right. So we get in there, we want to know what the kingdom is, we want to walk in it in our own lives, and then we want to be an example. You disciple people not so much with what you say, what you but do. by people looking at your yeah, lives. Life. And if That's we right. live a life of obedience, and yeah. specifically a life, hey, look, we're going out on the road. We're out on the road. We're on the road. I keep going to have to say we're, we're going on, on the road. What we're doing is crazy. In fact, we have a teaching from last year called Being Crazy Enough to Walk in Your Calling that's on I our website mm -hmm. that recounts all the adventures and the, the God stories, as they say, right? Right. This is crazy. Who in the world goes on the road like this with six, six children and everything? Children. And, and I say, yes, you're right, but we don't have a choice because this is our Me, calling. Right. This God is our you. ministry. Right. If we don't do this, we're being disobedient. Yeah. So the way we seek the kingdom is, is you know, awkwardly and, and just, you know, we go like a child, like a toddler. Yeah. We go out and we drive down the road and we see how it goes and the father keep showing up. So we, right. we want to go where we're welcome. That was mm -hmm. Yeshua's model. He said, where people welcome you in. So when people right. open up a city and invite us, and we're still taking invitations, people can come on and, and invite us you know, in, right. uh, is, is to come in and say, what can we do to come alongside what you're already doing or you know you should be doing in your city? We'll come in, we'll draw a crowd, we'll teach in a, you know, a message and be a catalyst to break open in your city what you maybe can't do or won't do, right. but, but if we just do that, we found not the fruit. We need to have people who are more pastoral. We're more in the prophetic and the apostolic. <laughs> right. The pastoral need to be there daily to help bring the people in. And you were talking about the spiritual giftings. There are five, mm -hmm. and yet we've defined them into the pastor, and you're the pastor, and you have to do all of it. No. Well, we right. need the prophetic, we need the apostolic, yes. and we, we need the pastors, but we need the evangelists, yeah, and we need the teachers. teachers right. And if a pastor is just, not just only specifically a pastor, and he tries to be a teacher, you know what, let someone else teach in your congregation. Mm -hmm. The ultimate thing is to walk in your gifts, That's right. not to be over a church body, right. but to do what you're called to do. And so we want to say to everybody, I use this phrase a lot, I say, no more, no less. Walk in your calling, no more. No less. Right. No more, no less. Don't covet. If you want to be, well, I wish I could be a teacher like him. That's covetousness. If you're not called to be a teacher like him, don't. That's be right. who you're called, wired into your DNA, who you were set from the beginning of time to be. And again, we've worked out ways to help you do that. Like right. not just say do it, but how to do right. it. And when you do that, you come, you do what you're supposed to do. I do what I'm supposed to do. And we are a healthy body That's that right. is absolutely going to be a light to the world and transform and bring that message of the gospel of the kingdom out to the world. We only have a couple minutes, okay. but quickly, what do you see prophetically? 
prophetically, um, we see that people, that, that, people are, that people are going to really get this kingdom message. People are waking up. We say kingdom now. And people go, I was just talking about that. There's something going on where people are finally saying the gospel he that we've been preaching. Yeah, yeah, the gospel. We've been preaching the gospel of salvation, which, by the way, if you look in the Bible, there's not one time does it say the gospel of salvation. It talks about the kingdom of heaven. Right. Okay, the kingdom of God and preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. The gospel of salvation is crucial. It's your citizenship in heaven. It's how you become a citizen. Yeah, we need right. to stop thinking of ourselves as members of a church, which causes denominationalism yes. and separation, right. and realizing that Yeshua didn't come, Jesus didn't come to bring a religion, but to bring a kingdom. That's right. And that we're not members of a church, but we're citizens of this kingdom. Right. Not only citizens, but children of the king. That's we are right. royalty. That's if right. we would understand that, That's right. yeah. now we're talking because we have to step up, not sit in a pew and expect that pastor to do everything, but you step up, yes. give your pastor a break, serve yes. in the capacity that you're being called to do. Be bold. I train leaders. I have a leadership training program called Kingdom First that we're doing to train leaders because everybody's called to be a leader. Two people in a room, one of them's leading, okay, yes. or should be. But you have to do it in your realm of authority. Because if you try to do it outside of your realm of authority, guess what? You have no authority in that area. So what do I see prophetically is people getting this kingdom understanding kingdom. that it's not just about getting saved and getting other people saved, but what's next? And that's becoming a full-blown citizen in the kingdom with the rights and responsibilities, functioning just what you're supposed to do. And then how in the world can the darkness stand against that? There's so much light. And how can people not want to be in this kingdom? If yes. we're powerful and we're getting that abundant life, that's, right. that's all the witnessing that you have to do. We that's need right. to stop witnessing with our mouth and, and witness with the fullness of our lives. Right. we got to go. Thank you all for being Thank here. You. Don't Thanks forget so tonight at 5 o'clock at New Life, you want to be there or be square. No, but you want to be there. And then and tomorrow all day. And then tomorrow, tomorrow all day right. at mm -hmm. New Life. Repairingthebreach.global forward slash Augusta and all the information is on there. We'd love to and, see you. Yeah, yeah. and 11 o'clock tomorrow, yep. 5 o'clock tonight. Yes. Well, we're going to go to.